The Locust Horde had many ways to dish out devastating amounts of damage to their foes. From the Locust Generals, the Hollow Creatures, the Locust Infantry and much more. But as part of their arsenal, the Locust Horde had created and modified many barbaric weapons tailored to their own ways of dealing punishment to the humans and the Lambent. So as always, I'm your host Abs, and here are the unique and vicious Locust Weapons in Gears of War lore. The signature standard issue Locust Rifle used earlier in the Locust War was the Hammerburst Assault Rifle, a burst fire weapon that was seen as the Locust counterpart to the COGS Retro Lancer, exceeding the Retro Lancer and even the Lancer Mark II in terms of accuracy due to the burst fire rate. But the Hammerburst is not ideal in close quarters combat or melee attacks since the Retro Lancer had a bayonet and the Lancer Mark II had a chainsaw bayonet. However, the Hammerburst always thrives in open or mid range. But a result of a number of modifications to the Hammerburst led to the Hammerburst Mark II, which included a longer barrel and a larger bore for high caliber rounds, a new iron sight and a reworked action for receiving and ejecting cartridges, but more notably, possessing both an automatic and semi-automatic fire mode. Many Locust forces used the Hammerbursts, but more so the lower ranking Locust, such as the Drones. However, even the higher ranking Locust, like the Theron Guards, Palace Guards, and even the Cantus, were seen with the Hammerbursts occasionally. One of the Locust Horde's deadliest weapons was the Torque Bow, wielded exclusively by the Theron Guards, who had a mastery of the weapon designed for the Locust Elites, as it is far more dangerous and utilitarian compared to most weapons. A brutal projectile weapon, it is capable of instantly dispatching a humanoid target. Even a heavily armoured gear is no match for the Torque Bow's savagery. Its range and accuracy, provided a bolt is fully charged, is phenomenal, and unlike other explosive weapons, the Torque Bow maintains this accuracy even over extreme ranges. It is also a viciously effective close combat weapon. The large, scythe-like blades on the Torquebow's forward limbs enable it to be used in devastating melee attacks, making the Torquebow second only to the chainsaw bayonet in melee strength. Exclusively used by the iconic Locust Boomers was the Boomshot Grenade Launcher, which fires a catastrophic, delayed fuse, high explosive shell creating a large explosion upon impact, followed by the detonation of about 3-5 to five small bomblets that create a series of secondary explosions which are comparable to a cluster bomb. Even though it's not safe to fire at close range, since you can commit suicide, boomers will fire their boom shots at point blank range due to their stupidity. They somehow don't seem to be affected at all by this suicidal move. But this is probably because of their innate durability, allowing them to shrug off the explosions with ease. The shell is loaded into the boom shot via a drum magazine, so looking closely, boomers can be seen pumping it as if it's a shotgun. The gun is also noticeably longer when empty, but the barrel is pushed back again when the drum is inserted, locking it in place, almost looking like a shotgun pump. The boom shot is fundamentally a large heavy length of steel, so it does a large amount of damage in melee, but the Boomshot's iron sights are poor to say the least. Overall though, the Boomshot is designed to dish out heavy damage, being able to kill multiple enemies at once. A weapon used not for war, but for the more simpler things in life, such as chopping up rockworm meat to serve and feed the locust. After a hard day's work, <laughs> this weapon was the Butcher Cleaver. The Locust Butchers would equip this weapon in order to fulfil their duties for the Horde. It is at least 3 foot long and consists of a weighty, solid metal razor sharp blade. Because of the sheer size of a Butcher Boomer, they can hold it relatively easily in one hand. But if you manage to take down a Locust Butcher, then in order to wield it, for the humans it is a two handed weapon. Now in the Lambent War, former Locust General Uzil Srak had a special version of the cleaver, a sort of cleaver staff, a monstrous heavy weapon used by the gigantic locust. 
Srak was a mighty 12 feet tall, and this weapon must have been exclusively crafted for his power and strength. By the looks of it, this staff was at least 5 to 6 feet long at a minimum. A bullet and explosive resistant shield wielded by the locust maulers was the boom shield, consisting of a central oval shaped body with four retractable plates. The boom shield protected the user from head on damage caused by bullets and explosions. The shield itself was highly resistant to damage, even being able to take direct hits from boom shots and bolo grenades without suffering a loss of usability. It can be used as a mobile cover, but it can also be planted down, but enemy infantry can kick it down. It might just save you from razor hail as well, as we saw the locust maulers using it as sort of an umbrella against the razor hail which can kill you, so that was pretty cool. Also, the Mauler Elites actually equipped a modified version of the Boom Shield, so when the Mauler Elite would be shot at, they can aim at the enemies with the Boom Shield and kill them with the enemy's own deflected bullets. The standard issue sidearm for the Locust was the Baltok Pistol, a Magnum revolver able to deal wounding damage. The Baltok was used specifically by the Locust Drones, in this case, the special class of Locust Drones, known as the Bolters, and they had a mastery over the Baltok Pistol, and they were able to use them in cover to cover aggressive ambushes, but the Baltok Pistols were also found in the arsenal of other Locust, such as the Grenadiers and Theron Guards. An accurate and powerful sidearm, despite initial COG protocols against using and keeping enemy weapons, this handgun was starting to find favour with many gears in the COG. This was due to it dealing much more damage compared to the snub pistol and having exceptional stopping power. The Locust weapon design philosophy revolved around power and the Baltok pistol had plenty of it. The Gorgon submachine gun, or also known as the Gorgon pistol, this was another Locust sidearm, but this was typically wielded by the Locust's elite, most notably the Cantus priests, but was also used by the Theron guard. It has a hydraulically loaded spike to work the action. Each trigger pull fired one loaded round, and the recoil from that round was used to fire more rounds on the backswing. The spike continued this back and forth process until it had fired 8 rounds in succession, at which point the hydraulic spike locked and cut off the action until the next pull of the trigger. This entire process happened in a split second. The Gorgon was always reliable for its firepower. A vicious weapon that the Savage Boomers used was a single shot grenade launcher that fired a small creature which was called a digger that had explosives attached to it. The digger launcher was ideal for close and long range combat and the digger creature is housed in a single round magazine. The digger would dig underneath and through the ground, hence its name. It would make a loud munching sound as it would approach its target, while kicking up dirt and paving tiles along its path. Making its approach very obvious, the digger then pops out of the ground and stays in the air for a split second, where the trajectory was set and explodes, releasing shrapnel in addition to the explosive blast. The heads of nearby enemies burst open into a flush of blood and brain. The Locust Horde would modify any human weapons they saw fit to repurpose, into something even deadlier. One great example of this was the breach shot. When the Locust had captured the UIR's GZ-18 Mark II sniper rifle, they modified it and gave it crude attachments, turning it into a sniper without a scope. The added bayonet on the breach shot could also be used in horrific fashion, by flipping the gun around and executing a foe. The breach shot was carried most notably by the Locust Ragers, but they toss the weapon aside once enraged. The rifle is fed from an internal 4 round capacity magazine and is operated through straight pull bolt action. Another weapon used exclusively by the Locust Maulers is the large and dangerous explosive flail. This has an explosive tipped charge that ignites on impact when swung at sufficient velocity. Maulers and their elite brethren swing their flails overhead when they are on a charge, however when in defensive positions, they are unable to use their weapons. 
The tip of the flail resembles an overly enlarged ball or grenade. These explosive flails are way too dangerous in close quarters, so you just gotta get out of harm's way ASAP or you're done for. The locust maulers are able to use the explosive flails, thanks to their sheer size and strength, but a human or even a regular locust drone wouldn't be able to use or handle an explosive flail. The locust also had their own signature combat knife for close quarters melee combat. This was standard issue for their infantry and perhaps even more valuable for them since their standard hammer bursts weren't very useful in a melee situation like the Lancer. Although some locust like the Cyclops love to use the Lancer Mark IIs as a sign of prestige of having killed a gear using the cog's own weapon against them. However the locust general Ram had a much larger version of the locust combat knife. His own signature serrated knife. A large dagger that Ram loved to use in order to shred and personally execute humans or lambent. It is a knife in the hands of Ram due to actually how huge he was, but to the humans it's practically a sword. Ram is also capable of charging, turning the knife into the bayonet charge of a retro lancer, but needing much less distance to impale a gear due to Ram's strength and speed despite his large frame. As the knife was serrated, every wound was devastating and if by any chance the victim is not stabbed to death or beheaded, they would eventually bleed to death. Ram's signature execution with the serrated knife would be to lift the gear up with one hand. He would then either behead them or impale them through the body. Either way, a gruesome and unforgiving end. One of the cog's weapons was the sword off shotgun, a double barreled very powerful shotgun, packing extreme power that could kill large enemies or multiple foes at once within point blank range with one shot. However, it had a painfully slow reload time which would lead you very vulnerable. So in typical locust fashion, the sort of shotguns that found their way into locust hands were heavily modified as well. This became known as the very rare Elite Sword of Shotgun and this was equipped by the ferocious Theron Elite. This weapon had two bayonets protruding out of the bottom of the gun, which made the weapon lethal even when the Theron Elite was reloading his weapon as he was able to bayonet charge his enemies. The Troika heavy machine gun was a mounted double barreled heavy machine gun which seemed to be a modified version of the minigun with two rotary ammunition drums and active cooling to allow virtually continuous firing. The Troika had an extremely high fire rate and was used almost exclusively by the Locust Gunners which were another specialised class of Locust Drones. Becoming expert users of the Troika machine gun whether it was in camps, settlements or anywhere else. Now General Ram had a heavily modified and custom made Troika heavy machine gun. This absurdly powerful machine gun could only be wielded by the sheer strength of Ram and this was his primary range weapon throughout his time post emergence day. In order to reduce the weight of the Troika, the Troika shield had been removed as it would obstruct Ram's field of vision as well as the fact that Ram's Krill shield already made the Troika shield redundant. It was also modified with boom shot stock for Ram to reliably hold the weapon as opposed to the stockless Troika turret. It was also equipped with a modified boom shots magazine to carry a large amount of Troika ammunition. The weapon is apparently pump action given that Ram pumps the two barrels before fighting Delta Squad. The Locust Tremor. This was a boomer variant used to summon cedars and they had a specific weapon called the Tremor Hammer. The Tremor would position the Thumper Spike into the ground and then use their hammer to hit the Thumper. The seismic reverberations would then be used to call cedars up from underground to the surface. The Tremor hasn't been seen to use the hammer offensively, but one would of course assume that it would be a deadly melee weapon if used for those purposes. The standard issue grenades used by the Locust as well as the Cog were the Frag Grenades also known as bolo grenades. The range on these grenades depends on the user, just like with any other grenade, but the frag grenade's blast radius is large and a combat roll will rarely get you out of harm's way, 
the frag grenades can do devastating damage to troops, vehicles and more. But the Locust, the Locust Grenadiers, would often be seen to be equipped with frag grenades as part of their arsenal, since they were very aggressive shock troopers, being able to deal heavy damage to the gears. A very unique type of grenade used by the Locust Horde, more notably the Cantus Priests, was the Ink Grenades. This was actually an infant nemesis Inca housed inside an incendiary grenade casing. When triggered, the Ink Grenade releases a thick black and green poisonous smoke for a short amount of time. The smoke damages enemies and obscures their vision. Prolonged exposure to the smoke will down or kill an enemy and a downed enemy is more susceptible to the poison and will die within a few more seconds of exposure. The Cantus and even Scourge would use these ink grenades in a variety of ways. For instance, flushing enemies out of places, setting traps, or even simply denying areas. An exclusive grenade, however, used by General Ram and the Theron Elite, was the Krill Grenade. It functioned similarly to an ink grenade, but instead of toxic ink, it attracted a swarm of krill to rip apart any humans unfortunate enough to be caught in the ink. Now it is unknown how this exactly works, but it seems like these grenades are used in daytime where the krill are not seen, so there could be something in the ink that helps the krill detect its prey, such as a peculiar pheromone that attracts only krill to that particular vicinity. Despite similar outward appearances to the ink grenades, it is possible that this species of immature nemesis were a special and separate breed. Now during the Lambent War in the Gears timeline, the Locust Cantus Priests equipped a wooden staff. This was a two-handed, close combat weapon, utilised and manufactured by the Temple of the Trinity. Many Cantus held these weapons, but more notably, Cantus Bodyguards or Guardsmen, who would guard the Temple and the High Priest Keats of Roll from any intruders or criminals. The staffs were used to subdue the perpetrators, or in other cases, kill them with sufficient force. As the Cantus were an average of 7 feet tall, and were dangerous locusts, this wouldn't have been a problem for them. It is possible that Scourge's dual chainsaw staff may have originally been a normal Cantus staff before it was heavily modified, but Scourge didn't use the chainsaw staff in the Lambent War, so it is possible that it was created exclusively for him later on in the Locust War. So with no chainsaw staff in the Lambent War, what did Scourge use? Well, he was seen to use a modified version of the Hammerburst Assault Rifle, which was the Gorgon Hammerburst Rifle. This was a weapon hybrid that combined the fast fire rate of the Gorgon submachine gun with the stability of the Hammerburst Rifle, providing a unique blend between a light machine gun and an assault rifle. Now it could be the case that this weapon was the precursor to the Gorgon SMG that the Cantus were always seen to wield, or it was just simply a modified rare version of the weapon, which is also possible. However, in the Locust War, Scourge had the signature brutal weapon that suited him very well. The dual chainsaw staff, ferocious motorized chainsaws at the end of each staff supplemented by Scourge's mighty strength, making for an extremely destructive weapon, with Scourge being able to slice a cog centaur tank in half like it was nothing and killing the gears that were inside. When Scourge jumped onto Rig 314, the only weapons that the gears could use to combat the dual chainsaw staff was their own chainsaw counterpart, in the form of the Lancer Mark IIs, as Tykaliso and Dizzy Wallin engaged Scourge in a chainsaw duel, but ultimately failed due to Scourge's sheer power. The only gear who could match Scourge's power in a chainsaw duel however, was the man, the myth, the legend himself, Marcus Phoenix. Scourge fought Marcus and Dom in the Queen's throne room inside the Locust Capital Nexus during Operation Hollow Storm, but Scourge also had other weapons at his disposal which were the signature Cantus weapons in the form of the ink grenades and the Gorgon SMG. The Gorgon SMG was best in close quarters combat, where it could zoom to a small degree and seemed to have burst fire as well as an automatic fire rate. 
and Scourge was also able to summon Locust Tickers to assist him. But Marcus was able to overpower Scourge in the Chainsaw Duel, and was able to cut his dual chainsaw staff in half. Scourge tried to use the two split chainsaw staffs, but Marcus destroyed both chainsaws, and therefore Scourge had lost the fight, and his signature weapon was destroyed. As a result, Scourge had retreated on his Hydra mount. Now in the early concept art of Scourge, his character design depicted a huge chainsaw attachment to his arm. This looked really cool, but this idea was replaced by the eventual dual chainsaw staff, which was a great replacement. Ultimately, the dual chainsaw staff was a destructive weapon that suited Scourge's nature very much. Scourge's name means a person that causes great suffering, and this was the case with Scourge, as he liked to inflict heavy damage and suffering on the Sirens. Whether it was capturing and torturing Gears and Stranded, or by simply causing devastating punishment with his signature dual chainsaw staff. In the Locust's major cities, such as Nexus, the Locust had large defensive towers in order to protect their cities and troops from any threat and to keep a watch for any disturbances. They had an anti-air system that could shoot computer-guided rockets with pinpoint accuracy, which made them very dangerous. After the flooding of the hollows, resulting in the majority of the Troika mounted machine guns being destroyed, the Savage Locust thought of an inventive idea to replace the Troika, and this was the multi-turret. Now the Savage Locust lacked the technology to rebuild their previous creations, so they created improvised gun racks to mount and fire multiple weapons simultaneously. Multi-weapon and multi-purpose stationary turrets, where they could swap in whatever weapons they could salvage. Whether it was Retro Lancers, Nasher Shotguns, or the Boomshot Grenade Launcher. The Locust Horde had their own signature ammo crates to resupply and refill ammunition. Whether it be large or smaller crates, these would be spotted around Locust areas such as the Inner Hollows, Nexus, or the Deadlands. And finally, we'll poetically circle all the way back to Emulsion with the Emulsion Explosive Canister. Filled with explosive refined emulsion, the Locust Horde would use these canisters as emplaced bombs to destroy large sections of a foundation, structure or building, causing immense casualties and structural collapse. You can think of these as the Locust's equivalent to a propane tank. And that my friends are all of the unique Locust weapons in Gears of War lore. Drop a like if you enjoyed this lore video, Subscribe for more similar content like this. I'm your host Abs, and as always, I'll catch you guys next time.